Okay. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hey, travelers. Welcome to Life's a Voyage. I'm Tatiana, your host, and this is Adam, my pretty much co-host, but without the title. Yeah, when are we need a new guest? Um, Hopefully soon. I have some planned, some safe plannings. Yeah. We'll see when they get released. Probably February. I was hoping Rick would be on here by now. Rick will be on here. He's the next guest. Okay, great. <laughs> we're really, he, he's like, you guys are really hyping me up, and now we're really hyping him up. Yeah, we're, he's this gonna is like listen to this. like the third episode he's been mentioned. <laughs> like, he's, he came to me and he was like, dude, that made, that made the whole podcast worth it. Like, you mentioned me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tag him in it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to be talking about money and the role it plays in our lives. I know it's a big topic, but I feel like this is something that I wish someone said to me when I was younger or even like a year or two ago, right? Like someone needed to just sit me down and be like, money's not everything, which it's not. It it really isn't. It actually doesn't matter that much as, as long as you, you know, have the life that you want. And that's basically the gist of today's episode the biggest thing i want to get across is that if if whatever you want in life costs ten dollars then that's all you need to make is ten dollars if what you want in life costs a hundred thousand dollars then maybe you have to work a little bit harder than the person that wants something for ten dollars but it's what you want and not like the standards that like society tells us to make six figures a year or whatever and it's like well do you need six figures a year like realistically be sweet i mean maybe for us because we have a super expensive hobby slash passion yeah (laughs) photography not the cheapest thing we could have gotten ourselves into huh not at all but i think that the biggest thing is to work backwards when thinking about money is what do i want and how much does that cost versus i need to make millions of dollars and have a million dollars for retirement and this and that you know it's it's counterintuitive to think that way because maybe you don't need that much money or maybe you need more money right i think it really goes back to you kind of like what you were saying at the beginning that when you can make it not about the money is when you'll be the most make the best decisions with money and so i think that's like the important thing is getting yourself away from being dependent on money or goals money goals like putting numbers to everything you need to think more about your what you want what makes you happy and not the dollar amount associated with that right um so just to start i wanted to talk a little bit about our backgrounds our financial backgrounds spill all the dirty details about our finances oh um do you want to go first yeah so i basically you want me to talk about like when i when i grew up yeah like just talk about like your entire like view of money like how it's changed because yours is very different than mine right as per everything in this co- podcast we differ yeah very much yeah so i grew up in a very like run-of-the-mill middle class um suburban household and really that it was great like i really enjoyed my childhood and like had a great time my parents provided everything i ever needed um we weren't by any means wealthy but like we had enough to get by and like i was always able to do whatever i wanted to do skateboarding which snowboarding yeah which was great like growing up i still got a job when i was 16 to achieve you know if i wanted anything extra it was kind of on me my parents always provided the bare minimum and you know obviously they went above and beyond but like putting me in sports that obviously costs a lot of money but the one thing I never really got was an education about money, even in high school. But most importantly, I think that's something that's kind of taught at home or from experience. So when I moved out of my parents' house when I was 19, I knew absolutely nothing about money. I had been working freelance. I'd been working a part-time job, which we talked about in the last episode. It was on commission. So like I was making a fair bit amount of money, but I really had no idea how to manage it. And that was really the most important part. I was able to save a lot of it because I was living at home. But the second I moved out of my parents' house, it went really fast. And I really, looking back on it, I'm like, well, I wish I knew more about money so that that didn't happen. (laughs) But it was a great great learning experience. Yeah. But also, and it was not like I was blowing it on stupid stuff. I was basically just 
didn't know how to manage my monthly expenses being a generally like teenager ambitious teenager buying whatever you wanted and i mean i wasn't being frivolous but like if but like cameras no not necessarily cameras even like that wasn't even the issue (laughs) (laughs) it was like if i wanted food i would just go buy food you know i wouldn't i wouldn't go grocery shopping or anything you never went grocery shopping he never went grocery shopping right ever and i mean that's how it was growing up like i would just go buy food because i always lived at home and i had my own income but then when you're relying on your own income and you have to pay bills it's a completely different story yeah i think that it was you had an amazing childhood your parents are great and they took care of you but they it was almost like a disservice because you were never taught how to manage money right and i on the other hand had to know everything about money had to know everything about money because we had none right (laughs) i grew up on welfare i was i only got where i am because of food stamps and section a and you know having government health insurance and that's how i survived and i don't even know how we survived because counter or whatever to popular belief food stamps is not enough money to eat like we didn't have food sometimes and like we were very poor and I'm fine with admitting that now. I feel like for a really long time, I was ashamed of that. When I went to college, I didn't tell anyone. I didn't know when I first met you. Yeah. You were just another another middle class kid. But Yeah. And I, I was really ashamed of it. And then I was like, this wasn't my choice. Like, it, it wasn't my fault that we were. Not that it was my mother's fault. Not that it was my dad's fault. It was no one's fault. It was, you know, circumstance and life. You know, life happens. And I'm not mad about it. I think that I wouldn't be who I am today if I grew up with tons of money or even if I grew up, you know, fairly well off, like in the situation you did. I wouldn't be the same person, you know. But anyway, um, because we had no money, I knew that I hated life without that, like, stability or that, you know, security, really, more than anything. I was like, this is sucks, (laughs) you know, like, this is horrible, so I worked really hard to make sure that my life wasn't like that, like, really, really hard, and, you know, as soon as I could get a job, I had multiple at a time, my senior year, I worked two jobs, graduated high school, worked, you know, 60 plus hours a week over the summer going into my college year, and just really knew that I wanted to save money, and I wanted to be secure, so I always was, like, on it when it came to my finances like from the minute I started making money like I I love telling people this but like when I had my first job I would get a check let's say the check was like $450 I would put $400 in savings and then use $50 to like go to the movie theater and buy snacks or something like that like that's all the money I would give myself wow gave yourself an allowance yeah see I was um kind of on the other other end of the spectrum where if I got $450 I would spend 400 of it on probably camera equipment (laughs) and fifty dollars to live on but i think like that was probably the one thing i did do right was at the time i didn't really know that i was are you saying i have something no i'm just itching my face was that like i was really investing i guess in in my like practice but you didn't even know you were investing no it was just like oh i need to get cool (laughs) cool shots of these people skateboarding so i bought i'll buy a drone and then you know after thousands of dollars of buying camera equipment you turning it, it you, ha- you have to make money <laughs> with it you know so yes um but yeah so coming from our very different backgrounds we have very different views on money and we well now our view is very similar because our finances are one in the same at this point because we live together we we do everything together we work together so yeah i think it's just comes from having shared experiences now and also the fact that anything that's bad for me is bad for you or anything that's good for me is good for you and vice versa exactly so um going forward on this episode it's kind of like the difference between how we got here and what i knew or learned before you did or what i taught you or what you taught me about money and like that kind of thing so um i would say my i want to hop in real quick to the people that don't listen till the end And I want to say that my first piece of advice is to just save your money. If you can, save money. And no, I'm not like a financial advisor. I don't know everything. But if you have the ability to save money, put it in a Roth IRA like, or whatever you can do 
save it don't touch it put it in a different bank account forget you have it i forget i have money all the time which sounds ridiculous but like it has saved my ass like i just put it in a different savings account in a different bank from my checking account i don't look at that account ever and then i'm like oh crap this emergency happened i need five hundred dollars i need all new tires six hundred dollars for new tires for my freaking car I don't have to worry about going into debt for tires. I have it in that secret bank account that I forgot right. about. So. Yeah, I mean, at this point, there's like so many tiers of saving that we haven't even been able to reach our emergency money. Which yeah, we, we haven't touched our emergency money in ever, actually. We're... we're but that's the point. You're, it's supposed to be there for up that way. a severe emergency. And it's like, if we don't need it, then we don't need it. Yeah, so definitely save your money. Have a rainy day fund most americans can't afford a four thousand dollar emergency or no a four hundred dollar emergency but the average cost of an emergency is like four thousand dollars or something crazy wow. like that did not know that that's yeah. a good fact so you know save for an emergency because as soon as something hits and you have to take out of your savings like there's it's hard to recover from that so yeah definitely or even worse people end up having to put it on credit and then you have to pay even more yeah Open up a credit card, though. Yeah, do build your credit. That's do a good build thing. your credit. That's. A good I didn't know that as as growing up. I had zero dollars in my name. Oh, credit. I wish someone told me to open up a credit card way before I did. Yeah, you get a credit card when you're like eighteen from your bank, right? No, we were. It was twenty eighteen. No, but you you can get a credit card when you're young, right? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, your parents can put you on a credit card. Yeah. Or you, if you go to your bank as you, an authorized buyer. Yeah. Okay. Before you're eighteen. Yeah. I know I have friends who had parents who did that, put them as authorized buyers before they were 18, and they have great credit scores. And I'm like, that's not fair. My parents didn't do that for me. <laughs> like, how does that count? Yeah, the one alternative to that, if you don't have that sort of scenario, I believe you can go to a bank, or if you have a bank account and you have a savings account, you can have like a credit card that's against when your you savings account. Yeah. yeah, when you turn 18. So that way, like, it's credit but it's your own money you're spending and yeah. you have to pay them back just to show that you're capable of pay- paying someone back yeah and i i do wish someone told me those things oh gosh but um so save your money one uh open a roth ira as soon as you can and just put the max try to max it out every year if you can um and um save for retirement because who knows if we'll have social security by the time we're ready for that gosh uh and then also i wanted to say just to invest your money and we invest a lot of our money in equipment or in our business we've been investing almost all of our money in our businesses but we're finally at the point where we're comfortable enough that we can start investing in like the stock market which we're venturing into right now and that's like our that's the step we're at like we're we're not like super financially stable that we have like millions of dollars in the stock market or anything like that, like some people will tell you, but um, like some people will advise you to just put all your money in the stock market. I don't believe that's the answer. That's the answer, but yeah, I think it's important to have multiple versions of you got to have a lot saving. of buckets. That's what our financial planner told me. She was like, we have to have lots of buckets to pull from. So we're, we're putting the money in the buckets now, all of the different buckets, you right. know, um, so yeah, that was my, the one thing, if you don't listen to the rest of the podcast, save your money, figure out how to save your money. What would you say is the one thing? Yeah, I don't know. It's hard because I'm trying to think of what I could say to people that may not have that opportunity to, to save money. To save your money, but, right. But my... Oh, if you're not in the position to save money, actually physically putting it in the bank, I would say to cut back your expenses. That would be the next best option is to just cut your expenses as down to the bare minimum you can yeah it's not fun but you really kind of have to go through and give yourself a little bit of an audit and see where money is going to places that it might not need to is it like fast food is it you know netflix hulu apple plus and disney plus or whatever they all are right maybe just pick one or two maybe just pick one and share with a friend or something i don't know like we went through it where we really took all of our expenses down to the bare minimum and honestly we still live very minimalist i would say compared to most americans the american right way um 
Definitely. But if, if it's something like if we want to go get coffee or something, like yeah. we still just go ahead and do it because... Because life's short. And if, right. if the coffee makes you happy, just drink the coffee. Everything's good in moderation. Drink the coffee. Right. But then there's plenty of times where we just make coffee because it's much cheaper and like still just as good. We, and it, we enjoy it. We invested in a nice French press because it makes really good coffee. And soon we'll invest in a espresso machine. Right. That's Adam's next investment. Okay, now now you said it, so now I got to do it. We were going to do it anyway. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the opportunity. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but also, I won't buy it at full price, so. No, that's another thing. So, I guess the biggest thing I wanted to talk about in this episode is budgeting and how you can use money as a tool and budget everything um, in order to get where you want. So, instead of being like, I just want to make lots of money and then not know where your money is going or, you know. That could be just as bad as not having money. Yeah, you could you can make $100,000 a year and blow it all. And that is not what you should be doing. You could make, I would say that, you know, we make a modest income. I mean, this past year has been weird because of COVID, but we don't make $100,000 each per year, you know, like that'd be sick right now. But right. You know, we make an, a modest income and because we live in Rochester, which is a very affordable place and we cut back our expenses and we well, that budget. Was, yeah, that was also a decision of ours is like we obviously wanted to move somewhere that would be much more expensive and much nicer. But if we can't afford it, like, yeah, we, then we can't do it, you know? Yeah. And we don't live above our means. That's where I was getting at. It's like we really wanted to make sure that we could budget to save or to invest. Like that was part of our budget. And you know, if if it didn't make the budget, then, you know, if it was something fun and it didn't make the budget, yeah, it, it didn't happen. Yeah, it's a fine line between, like, you always want to, obviously, life's short and you want to do what you want to do, but, like, sometimes making a more calculated decision and maybe not doing that at this moment and waiting till you can afford to do so is often the better option. I know not everyone wants to hear that, but yeah, I don't want to hear that because I want to buy every camera in the world, but... I have to wait for the opportunity to be present. Yeah, and I think it's it also comes down to um, in moderation, you know? Like, we travel. We travel more than the average person, but we budget it in. And, you know, like... Yeah, it's a priority. It's a pri- We make it a priority, and we, we budget the hell out of our travel expenses, you know? Like, we make sure that we can afford it, and we're not putting any, anything on credit cards. Like, everything we've done, we've paid for... And the only debt we really have is student loans. Adam has student loans. Yeah. Um, And it's not like when we go places, it's not our goal to have like a lavish vacation. It's we go there and we enjoy being there. We stay in an Airbnb and like we kind of live there. We don't eat out every night. Well, sometimes we are lavish, but we're affordably lavish. Yeah. That's my favorite thing about travel is that you can you can travel nice, like very luxuriously, but on an affordable budget. And that is why you should hire me to plan your next dream vacation but yeah and small plug definitely a small plug but i think it's like looking past when you are traveling looking past like the first avail- available option because that's often the most expensive you know the things that are convenient for you to do when, especially when it comes to like eating you know we spend a lot of time like when we went um i'm trying to think of a good example but like when we went to paris like we found the spots that were both affordable but also very good like we weren't just going to go yeah. to any restaurant that's right down from the or like the first five-star restaurant when you google like good restaurants in paris you know right we walked around and kind of shopped we did a lot of grocery shopping like little bakeries that was so amazing Mm -hmm. i'm gonna get sad let's not talk about it but anyway budgeting is the most powerful tool when it comes to understanding money and understanding your money and where it's going um and we budget everything like we budget for food you know we budget everything that we're going to spend money on but we also like how i said we budget for travel well and i do this too is like you know a trip is going to cost you a thousand dollars do you have a thousand dollars now to spend on it or do you have to save a hundred dollars a month until you have a thousand dollars excuse me you know it's like that's that's what you got to do to really be successful with your money yeah, and I enjoy the way you approach budgeting because then I don't feel so like reserved about spending money. I feel like when we go places, we have 
you, we you have set the money. like a rough idea of a budget and then it's not like oh we can't do that because we don't have enough money it's like oh we can do everything we wanted to do and more because we, we thought about it, it. Yeah. yeah it's like planning ahead really you never want to go somewhere and then be like oh i can't get an extra dessert or like i can't try this delicacy because i didn't budget enough money you know like that would suck right or put yourself in a poor financial yeah actually we did this when we when we went to europe I didn't budget in a couple of things and we ended up spending the money on it anyway. And then I was like mad at myself because I, I was like, oh, we don't need to do that. And then we got there and I was like, no, I want to do this. And we did it anyway. And then I was, I mean, I had the money. I wasn't spending money I didn't have, but I was, I felt more stressed about spending that money. I should have just budgeted it in and then. Instead like, of trying to cut corners. Like I really wanted to go to the Moulin Rouge at the end of our trip. And I didn't budget that in. And by that time, I was like, probably should just hit it the next time around. So now we have to go back to Paris. We were supposed to. But that's you don't want to be put in that position where you can't do something because you didn't budget it. That would suck. Yeah. We've been there. We've done that. Yeah. That's why we try to keep it more open-ended and like not necessarily include everything in the budget and kind of just like see what's available to us those days and where the day takes us. I like that sort of style of sometimes it depends on the trip yeah i'm saying like from an it- itinerary approach like usually there's options yeah there's always options um but one of the things with budgeting that i want to say that would be useful for anyone watching is like if you know that you make let's say a thousand dollars a month that's just like to be good with numbers because i'm bad with math let's say you make a thousand dollars a month and you know that all of your monthly expenses is going to cost you eight hundred dollars then you only have two hundred dollars of extra money like what are you what are you going to choose to spend that money on like two hundred dollars of new clothes that you're probably going to like not love in a couple of years or something or two hundred dollars into your retirement fund where you can go on vacation when you're old yeah that's really like a more of a mindset mindset shift you're talking about because well that's what it is i definitely grew up like oh i want it i should buy it right now and then I have tons of clothes and like I don't really care about any of them like you said and it's like when you can invest it in something yeah. whether that's for us a piece of equipment or retirement, retirement or whatever it is yeah and you feel a lot better about it in the, in the long run oh yeah it feels so much better like when like the first year that I maxed out my Roth IRA I was like I felt powerful I was like holy crap because I, I grew up really broke so I was like I have retirement savings i mean it was only a couple thousand dollars but i was like i did that i saved that like that's my money and like i track all my expenses and all the money i assets and money that i do have and i remember when my like net worth hit a certain positive number and i was like i'm worth money like holy crap that just feels so good again money's not worth everything doesn't really equate your personal worth but like It made me feel so much more secure about starting a business because I knew I had assets. I knew I could afford to fail maybe a little bit, you know? Yeah, I think giving yourself that sort of room, like you said, afford to fail. I like that. Yeah. Because I think that's really what it comes down to. It's like, do you have... I could afford the life I wanted and I could afford to fail at it. Like, that was a crazy concept to me. And I think that's kind of what it takes for a lot of people. Yeah, I think it does. Um... So learn how to budget your money. I would love to do, like, I would love to talk to people about budgeting money. I I love budgeting. <laughs> I think it's great. I do it, like, for my job, for trip planning. I love budgeting trips. Yeah. I'm like, how can I go on a two-week vacation in some luxurious place and only spend $1,000? You know, like, that's less than I spend at home in two weeks, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, if you count, like, rent and everything. Or, like, in a month, like... We went on a month-long road trip and only spent a thousand dollars. Meanwhile, our rent was a thousand dollars at home, like that we weren't even living at. You know, I love doing stuff like that, like really, like making the most, really utilizing your money as a tool, rather than counting your worth on it. Right. For me, I feel like when you're in a position that you can say no. Or, you know, it's not something you absolutely feel like you need. Like, if you're buying a car, you're not like, oh, I need this car to, to like, for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And, like, if you put yourself in a position where you can say yes or no, that's usually when you end up ha- making the best decisions and getting maybe the best deals. And maybe being the happiest. Right. With your decisions and with the life that you've built yourself. 
so it's all about like thinking ahead i feel like which is something i never did as growing up it was always like oh what am i gonna do tomorrow you know skateboard yeah so when we first met i wasn't making a lot of money at that time i was working a couple part-time jobs and but i was saving a lot of money because i thought i was going to be in debt so i was planning ahead for that and saving for debt (laughs) for the life of debt um but i got out of that another topic um but when we met i wasn't making a lot of money and you were making more money than i was but i was saving more money than you were yeah way more like you weren't saving anything no i was spending it all yeah so now now that we've gotten to the point where our finances are one and the same i should have said something i should have been like yeah you know <laughs> also like we were in the position to like know each other's financial yeah we were status you know or... we just started dating but i wish i had said something <laughs> yeah because now your finances are my finances but um so it all worked out though it did it worked out we're okay thankfully and like because we budgeted for emergencies covid didn't knock us down like we didn't have to go out of business or anything like that because we budgeted for an emergency like a pandemic yeah we were we were always able to pay our rent um it was i mean we didn't make as much money as we did last year yeah, I mean, it comes down to, like you said, cutting down expenses to the point where we don't have to worry about not being able to pay next month or the month after that. It's like, yeah. we know we got it. And Yeah, you should be able to have an emergency savings where you could pay your monthly expenses for, like, three to six months, they say. Um, I'm, like, a worry wart. I have anxiety, so ours is six months. <laughs> and basically, whatever all of our bills are for the month, we have that saved time six. So that I know that if something were to happen, we would be okay. Like a pandemic worked out, you know? Yeah. It has to be an accessible Accessible. Yeah. Yeah. It can't just be like in a house or something. Um, But yeah. Sorry, I'm reading my notes. I'm sorry. I keep looking down because I'm playing with this print tie. (laughs) I'm easily distracted. (laughs) Um, So I guess... I guess where you were talking about mindset, I'm reading my notes, so I'm trying to make sure that we're hitting all the points we wanted to talk about. Um, When it comes to money as a tool and uh, making sure that you're not living your life based off of money, you're not letting money drive your life. They call it financial freedom these days. Like You hear that everywhere, like, oh, I want to be financially free. I want financial freedom, like on TikTok and like instagram and like all these business owners that are like oh i left my nine to five and now i'm financially free no debt blah 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 and like yeah that's a great like it's great to strive towards that but it shouldn't be about having money or whatever it should be about the life you want because as we're getting into being real adults and looking at like loans and stuff like that sometimes it's okay to have some debt there's healthy debt oddly yeah, there's using debt as a tool, and there's also people say like student loans are good debt to have because they're low interest, and you're building credit with them, and it's an investment into your education. Again, I think we, I don't know if it was the last episode we talked about this, but college is definitely not something everybody should do because yeah. not everybody's going to get out of it what they need. Yeah. Or it might not be something that you do need. Yeah, and even not even, even not even, um, even debt not associated to college, like for instance, getting a car loan. Sometimes it's better to have a nicer, newer car that's not going to require a lot of work, that has, you know, maybe you owe a lot of money off of it, but it's in better condition. It doesn't, you're not throwing your money away immediately. You're paying it over time, and maybe you're paying more money than you would have, you know, because of interest, but you have assets more available. You know what I mean? Did that make sense? You have more available capital, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And that way, obviously, like you said, I think the more important part is looking at it as, um, you know, you're going to invest more money over a longer period of time, but it's not going to cost as much to fix and things like that are really important to take into consideration because there's a lot of times that it seems cheaper in the short term, you know, but it ends up costing you a lot more and it's not worth anything by the time you're done with it. Yeah. Like, let me buy a $4,000 used car because that's all I can afford. But maybe, you know, if you have $4,000, get like a nicer, newer car and 
use that four thousand dollars for your payments for the next x amount of payments i don't know i'm again bad at math i don't really know how much an average car loan is and whatever but um it's about mindset and it's about understanding when to make those good moves and i feel like a lot of people it's like taboo to talk about money Mm -hmm. and i don't care about it anymore like yeah and we're by no means financial advisors or no we're just speaking from experience and like what our financial advisors have told us yeah and we, we have know. like you know we've we've seeked advice we've sought we've sought advice oh, that's a good one <laughs> i didn't know that i forgot about that <laughs> um we've definitely gotten to the point where we're like we don't know what to do we need help and like if you're young and you maybe you started a business young or you just got your first job and you don't know what to do and people are like oh pay off all your loans or buy a house or whatever like really look into it and seek advice from professionals because they know better than anyone they're the experts yeah sometimes what seems like the most logical decision is actually not like they might know another way around it or a better decision to make and i think that's important yeah. to know from people who have experience with that sort of yeah, and they can run numbers like crazy. They'll, they'll give you five different scenarios and this is how it's going to play out. And that's helped us so much to maybe make... It's maybe gotten us out of our comfort zone a little bit. Like, I'm more open to taking out a loan if it's to invest in something that I think is worthwhile. Right, if it's if that money's going to either make you more money than you will end up owing, then it's a good decision. That's yeah. kind of the way to look at it. It's like, even if it's something that seems like it's a money pit, like a car... If, 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 if it's, it's a necessary, necessary thing, <laughs> see, that's where it comes down to. It's not necessarily a want. It's, is yeah. it something that's going to end up saving you money in the long run? Maybe it's not making you money, but, but it's saving, saving yeah. you money. So I think you just need to, it's hard. It's not easy to think that way or to rewire the way you think about money. Um, it's really not easy. But it's hard to go through your finances in general. It's very important though. And I've just always been super aware and like I went through college and was like, I'm not, I don't, I don't want this debt. I'm going to pay it off as soon as I graduate. And I was saving thousands of dollars just to pay off debt. And like, I lived like a broke ass college kid for years. I was, I was broke, <laughs> like, like in the sense that I wouldn't even buy new clothes. Like, which is funny. Cause I was the exact opposite. I was very nonchalant. I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, I'm just going to spend all my money and take out all these loans because I'm not going to worry about it. But it's something that you should really be aware of, the actual cause and effect. Yes, you should know. I have a friend who wasn't paying attention to her student loans when she was taking them out. And she got herself into a predicament. <laughs> yeah, that should never have happened. She shouldn't have had any debt. And now she has almost 20K. So, you know, you really be really be aware of where your money's going or what money you're taking out or what your credit cards interest rates are or when you have to pay off your credit cards and stuff like that it's, it's all very important use it as a tool to get farther in life rather than letting it be a setback um, because a lot of people just get wrapped up in money when you know if you get a, a job out of college and that's like your first big paycheck right I used to say like oh when I get my first big paycheck I'm gonna like buy this pair of shoes I really wanted or something like that and now I'm like when I get my first big paycheck I'm gonna put it in the bank <laughs> like the stimulus check I was like "Ooh, I'm gonna save this <laughs> yeah I'm always like oh what can I spend this money on like that's my mind first goes to but I think you've helped to sh shape my uh mindset yeah and I do really encourage people to seek professional financial advice no matter what level of money you have right like you could be if you're in a lot of debt you really should seek advice if you're have more money than you know what to do with you really should seek advice but even if you're in the middle and you're like a normal person with like student loans and like you make a good wage and you're just like oh, i figure it out like just go talk to someone and use it to get further in life um because when money is not everything at the end of the day it is what drives society and everyone's always talking about the economy these days and oh we can't ruin the economy well the economy is not going to be here 
if the world falls apart <laughs> like if if let's say global warming goes the the bad way the economy's not going to be here but you need to be in a position where you're happy with what your life would be like without the economy i'll say okay that's a powerful statement i don't really know what that means but like if the economy went away tomorrow what's your life like and are you happy with it i got a lot of cameras so i mean that's so you're pretty happy i'm pretty stoked nothing about like me being here and like we live together that's cool too okay cool <laughs> god <laughs> it's all about the cameras how many times do you say camera every episode i don't know how many times have we referred to adam buying cameras like take a shot every time adam refers to buying Just put a little counter on screen yeah oh god okay well i'm gonna wrap that up um this episode maybe we were a little all over the place this time i don't know i feel it's a big topic to talk about so. it is a big topic i just i just want people to budget their money and save their money and use it to get to the position they want to be in because i feel like a lot of people don't properly utilize what they already have or don't have to get to where they want to be does that make sense yeah cool and i think it's like the biggest takeaway is to see that like we came from two very different places but we're both in the right. same place now yeah relatively yeah. yeah and we both had to figure out different things you know yeah i mean i had to figure out how to spend money which mm -hmm. is which i didn't have a problem with i just spent all my money yeah i i hurt when i try to spend money like it is so hard for me to hit like the buy button but adam's like oh i'm gonna buy it right now and then it's like three clicks on his phone and it's bought. yeah i mean it depends on what it is because certain things i know will make my life easier and will make it easier for me to make money yeah so while i had to learn how to spend money invest or invest money he had to learn how to save or cut back on spending cut back on spending yeah but now we've met in the middle and we're doing decent i wouldn't say we're like great everything's great but like we're, we're okay yeah we're doing what we can we somehow managed a pandemic so i would say we're we're alive and we're winning at this yeah. point <laughs> like i think that's all anybody wanted out of this like, year uh, i made it through 2020 pandemic still going on but like i'm still alive so we made it but okay i'm gonna leave that there today thanks for listening to another episode of our podcast my podcast that Your adam podcast. is uh starring in so far <laughs> uh, next episode new guest <laughs> i don't know about that we'll see okay <laughs> um if you could leave a review on apple it really helps us out leave any comments of topics you'd like us to cover and let me know what you think so far about the audio quality i think we got it pretty good but like let me know any feedback and if you're watching on youtube how can we improve it um, I hope you all are having a great day on your journey and I will talk to you later.